Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. I've been so busy here and the amplifier work is getting crazy, so hard box stuff too, so this will have to go back on the sideline until I have some more time, but the ARF deck is done. Uh, Jim said some people made comments, what do the knobs connect to and about some other stuff. I have chain drives, sprockets, all sorts of complex stuff going on. Uh, playlist, I have all the other videos. So if you want to see from the beginning to this stage, check it out. I don't have the screws in, but I uh, have the top covers on for protection. And there's a, a you know, a, like a right angle bend in the top cover. This is thick material. Uh, has nut inserts, so screws go throughout the perimeter. This is actually on caster, so this will slide out. I have three of these, so I have another power supply portion in the other room. I'm going to show you that too. Uh, but again, screws are all out, and I use these little plastic pieces behind the screw heads, and they're flaps, these steel you know, ears, I should say, the cabinet. So slides out and secured. I have one in here somewhere right there to keep it from sliding out. Uh, well, it shouldn't slide out, but just to keep it in place if I were to move the cabinet so you can see the casters on the top. I'll shake it back. So I'll have to redo the supply in the other room. This, the, I'm not going to use this one. I have one in the other room. I'll show you. So this, uh, this has panels on the side, the back, and front. These will interfere though, these little knob pieces for the spinner. So I think I'm gonna do something where I can pop them off and then I can put the panel on and <laughs> this will just be a solid panel. You won't even know what it is. Uh, tucked in the corner and actually it'll be in another room. It'll be over near the uh, Rockwell Collins auto tune amp. Out of sight, out of mind, won't even hear it. But solid front panels, solid side panels, and yeah. So, like a little mini fridge. It is tiny. I mean, it's literally up like my pocket for my pants below my pant pocket. This is the filter material. I'll explain that. Do you have another cabinet over there? I have another RF deck that's completed. I'll show that at some point. Buried in stuff. I have a lot of stuff going on over there. So, it's over there. But it's done. So. Yeah, I cleaned up over here. This is where I do the hard box stuff. So, garbage bag full of stuff. Okay, so. And those are other cabinets over there for another one. I'm going to organize that whole area. But you've seen that area before. So that cabinet is for the mount for the 10 meter one. So this covers 160 through 15, and that one covers 10. And it'll use the same plate supply. Okay, so I'm going to show you the other cabinet. I'll, the inside, I'm sorry, of the other cabinet. It'll be for the bottom. So see you soon. So I cleaned up a little bit in here too. I have a very busy shop here. Always working on stuff. I don't always put videos on. Just been uh, very busy. So I do my best. Uh, it's only me that comes down here. Uh, I have an AL82 in. Another um, winning on the payment for that guy's AL811H. I have the AK and I have the L1500. Uh, an SB200, it'll be going on the bench after the video, and more on the way. So, always working on stuff. And uh, Anyway, so here's the bottom cabinet. Someone added these. Those aren't stock. Normally there's like a hole there to for lifting. They, they had like a, I think there are two in the back too. They had a jig or something that would pick it up because this had a transformer in it originally for plate supply and it, the transformer was like 80 something pounds so they look like Allen like an 
Allen head uh, screw. So I'll remove those. Um, I don't know if I'll use this panel or another one. But clean it up, repaint it. So you can see it has this filter holder, which is pretty cool. So I'll keep all the hair and dust out and stuff. So the exhaust is on the back of the RF deck, and then the intake will be in the front. I might duck some of it outside. So, I don't know. I'll deal with that later on. So, the way this works is, it has a seal. It's like a neoprene seal. This is like shot. It's like dry out. I'll get rid of this grill because it's restrictive. But, I'll be using this type of... No, actually, I'll be using this blower. I had a used one. Same one I used on the 6 meter amp, but that one was brand new. This is an EBM Pabst. The uh, pressure and uh, CFM exceed the requirements for the tube. It act, uh, actually will allow for a um, higher amount of anode dissipation, but uh, the sample will be rated at the tube's maximum output. Uh, someone made a comment uh, that it's ready for 10 kilo. First off, this will be used in a legal manner, but I'll go over that in a sec. Let me, I don't want to go off course. Uh, if you look at the uh, older spec sheets, the absolute, absolute maximum rating is 12 kilowatts total output. So, okay, I'll say it again. I've said it before at least once, probably more. I had most of the parts already. I'm going to use this. I might not even use it really. <laughs> I have so many amplifiers here, I just don't use. Some, two people already offered to buy this and I don't want to sell, I'm not selling it. This is something I'm doing that's different. I've never done uh, something like this before with this size tube. So if it's used on the air, it'll be used within the legal limit. You're allowed to have, as a ham radio operator, you can have any size amplifier, anything. Um, it's up to you to run it legally. There are a lot of commercially made amplifiers that will do double the legal limit or more. So this happens to do even more. I have the parts and I'm doing it for the fun of it, you know, and at some point, you know, I've had inquiries. I, I'll probably end up making some for people outside the United States, they might need it for, I was actually, um, one one person contacted me and they wanted 160 through 10. I said, I don't feel comfortable doing that right now. I just have too much stuff going on. I'm not gonna commit to something that I know is just, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I keep my word and I can't set myself up for failure. So I said, look, I just don't have the time right now. But um, they wanted a 160 through 10 and it's doable, but then, you know, when this is done, I'm just going to copy the, the design of this, put in a new cabinet, use new parts, uh, and might use different parts. I use just what I had, but it'll be, you know, everything will be sized for continuous duty. So that company actually want to use it for testing balance and stuff. So there are people that want high power amplifiers like this for testing things uh, or different medical, or, you know, you know, applications or uh, you know, it could be someone uh, doing short wave or something in another band, in another country on a lo lower band or something. Who, who knows? So it's up to them with, uh, you know, how they want to use it and keeping it legal for, you know, their area that they're using it in. You know, staying within the, the laws that, you know, were set. So EBM and Pabst blower, these are great blowers. Allow it to run continuous duty. It's going to have a thermal switch in here, so if the intake temp were to get above a certain amount, everything will shut off except for the blower. So this has a high voltage. Take this off. It's a high voltage interlock. Uh, not sure if I'll be able to use this or not. I might. If I put a longer. If I put a taller standoff in there, maybe I'll have to high pot it, but this is good to have. Um, I'll have really good bleed resistors in here. Uh, you know, and this is just, if there's any residual voltage left or if something happens and the meter is wrong, you know, you always go in here with a, uh, you know, shorting stick with a resistor in series and then you, um, you know, put a hard short on it after. But 
not a bad idea to have a high voltage crowbar. Okay, so it originally had uh, 20, I think it was 25 microfarad 4kV DC oil full cap in here. Same one that's used in the Alpha 77 uh, SX DX amp. Uh, I took actually three of them. I took them out, sold them. I got good money for them because uh, a lot of times they end up leaking and these weren't leaking. So I had no use for it. I have a lot of oil full caps I'm trying to get rid of. So here's the original blower. Still good. Not sufficient. So you can see what's going on. The blower will be mounted here and pushes the air up into the RF deck. Okay, um, transformer used to be housed here, has mercury contactors, had uh, it ran on two separate circuits. One was for the plate supply, the other one was for everything else. So I'm going to stay with that same setup and uh, obviously the plate side that We'll have, I'm just going to disconnect it. This was used in a medical type uh, environment, so they had to keep the, the line clean, or actually they had nothing going in or out, so I don't need that. That's not needed, so uh, I believe it's the one over there. So I'm going to bypass that one. I'll obviously wire gauges and, you know, certain wire gauges and, you know, these contactors. I love mercury contactors. I've been using these since I was like 18, I think. They're awesome. Um, just have to be careful when you move something around that has mercury contactors. They can actually engage, you know, the mercury will slosh around. And so you just want to make sure you have the covers on uh, of the uh, the item. So, uh, you know, so you don't get electrocuted by accident. So here's the other end of the Alden connector, the high voltage. So that high voltage assembly will plug in right here. And there's an interlock. And boom, you know, so... So it has a capacitor, and you shut the amp off. Once the cap drains, then blower shuts off. So I don't have to worry about a time delay, relay, failing over time. So I'm going to be putting those electrolytic caps in here. I'm getting from Jim. I'm going to have a lot of capacitance. I want good regulation. Uh, the plate transformers will be housed outside of it. They are uh, 1.5 amps each at 5300 AC. So 5300 AC, that's AC, before it's rectified through a full wave bridge. Um, so 5300 AC at 3 amp CCS. They're made by MagnaSpec over in California. Good transformers. They have very low secondary. The secondary impedance is very low. Um, sorry, it's late here. I'm tired. So. Um, Henry Radio used them. They're in, I think they're still in business. They're in California. But they made, they also made the ECA transformer. So good transformer. So I have two of those. Uh, they'll be in a, an external cabinet with the proper high voltage lead. I'm going to use the Supercon connectors like I've used for years and years and years. Here's a 100 amp one that I'll be using for the filament. And then the 200 amp. Alright, the 250 amp ones are right here. So two for the line, two for the plate supply. So. Uh, the main, uh, the uh, breaker from the panel will connect with the Supercon. Everything in here is going to run on 220. Uh, for the plate supply, we get the two 250 amp ones, and then there'll be two that go out to the plate transformers. Um, don't need a neutral, just a ground. So nothing in here will run on 120. So that board has to do with the power supply and. See all these wires, uh, the, uh, you know, I have the uh, cable that, I don't know where I put it, but I showed it before in the last video, so check that out. So this connects to the one up on the RF deck, and, um, you know, I don't have to mess with these. I cut some, actually, because uh, certain things aren't used anymore, uh, and uh, the 12 volt supply and 24 volt supply will be down here, but I tried to keep it as original as possible, just less work for me. These are clamping diodes on the B negative side, so if there was ever a short on the B positive, the B negative can't come up to the same potential. Obviously these bleeder, this whole board's gonna come out. Uh, this is old, the old rectifier, the old 100K 50 watt resistors for the bleeders. And um, so, one thing at a time, there's a high voltage fuse, it'll have uh, Serious glitches, uh, really good, serious, serious 
glitch resistors. I'm probably going to use four, if I can fit them, four of the 200, 200 ohm ones uh, to give me 50 ohms. Otherwise, I might have to use something else. I don't know. If, it depends on how much space I have. I'm going to try to fit a variac in there to fine tune the filament voltage. I'll be right back. I have to. I have to recharge. Be right back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I had to actually delete some videos, not recharge it. I have a lot of videos on this memory card. So, I'm not a cinematographer. I am a amplifier repair guy and part-time builder guy. So, okay, so where did I leave off? So, yeah, these are circuit breakers. Oh, circuit breakers. So, luckily I have the drawing, schematic, theory of operation, and, and a lot of people would just rip all this out. That's, that's like the easy way, but it's like, I want to reuse the wire and reuse as much as I can because it's a good design. So, this thing is going to be awesome. So, yeah, so I'm going to try to get the Variac in there to fine tune the film and voltage and uh, fit as much as I can. So I'm, I'm good with uh, mapping things out, map everything out before you do anything. So these are the old soft start resistors. I'll have to have a pretty, pretty well uh, delayed soft start. I can't use the other type that I've been using. I'm going to have so much filter capacitance. So, you know, I've been uh, building and working on amplifiers since I was 16 years old. I'd say this project has been a lot of fun. Um, just a lot of fun. I see a lot of people nowadays building mono band amps, and that is easy. You know, I, I say to people, you know, doing something like this really forces you to learn and to be able to understand things because... You know, it's just so easy to build something monoband. It's like the same thing over and over, you know? And when it comes to building uh, something with an 811 versus, well, I shouldn't say 811, like something like a uh, four steel, I guess the cooling would just be different. So let's say something like with an 811 versus a big steel tube with, or ceramic tube with uh, handles, you know, the part the part sizes just get larger. You know, cooling's different, obviously, but it's really not, really not hard. This, this really, tests your skills you know and um you know and this is done i'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna show videos i'm gonna show it working you know into a dummy load i can't use my attenuated attenuator load i'm gonna have to use the the big boy load over next to the henry amp and uh you know i'll have a, an accurate meter i'll show the slug and everything will be you know shown um, in real time but so I really thank everybody for sticking with me on this I'm sorry I can't move faster uh, I think I've gotten a lot done so far con considering how much other stuff I have going on um, but uh, you know if it were customers I would uh, obviously be using all new parts or old, new old stock parts and I would it would be even nicer. You know, with my own stuff, I, I don't go as crazy. I used to back in the day, but... So... But, yeah, so... Uh, you know, and then another thing Jim actually suggested I add. You know, this this is a 366000 You know, this tube costs less money. I'll say it again. This tube costs less money than a brand new 3CX 1500A7 tube, if you bought one from iMac. I would never run a non-iMac tube uh, for that tube. So, for the 8877. So, this tube also has a really robust grid, and it's instant on, okay? I have the 4CX 15,000 amp here, that's, you know, multi-band, and, uh, you know, he wanted me to add that, you know, this amplifier is capable of 12 kilowatts. You know, if you went to 
the, the 10,000 tube that's capable of, you know, 28 kilowatts or whatever the rating is. It, it, first off, it's stupid. You can't use that for ham. That's just, it's not a good idea. And it's only half an S unit, you know, so roughly half an S unit. It just, anyone that knows about amps and antennas and stuff, you always want to spend your money on the antenna. You know, your antenna packs the biggest punch. So, again, this is just for the fun of it. So, anyone that's watching this and it, if it's turning you off or upsetting you, I'm sorry. This is just the project. It's just for the fun of it. But... So, give you a good look. But I challenge some people to, you know, anyone that's building something like this, you know, show it. Put it on YouTube or put it on some of the groups online, you know. This is what ham radio is about. Building things. You know, and uh, feel free to take some ideas from you know, my videos or whatever, I sure, you know, I mean, I, over the years, I've seen all sorts of stuff, read stuff, you know, and when I started learning, there was no YouTube, there was no Facebook to, to copy stuff off of, so it was a lot of trial and error, but, you know, I've gotten ideas from broadcast transmitters I've worked on, you know, Rockwell Collins amps, whatever, you know, um, commercially made amps, so there's nothing wrong with taking an idea from here or there and maybe morphing it into something even better and then sharing it with the world. But I'll tell you, that RF deck is heavy. It's It's got to be like, I need to get a regular scale, but it, it has to be like, it's got to be at least 70 pounds now. It's it's heavy, and that's without the tube installed. So, um, and that rolling cart, that cart's on wheels, so it's a rolling cart. This has not been painted, like I said, so. Actually, this filter looks like it's in good shape. So, waiting on a capacitor for this, some other parts. So, again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope everyone has a good night. And I'll have this Ameritron video on. The customer wants it on, so I'll, I'll uh, make a video on that and uh, I will see you guys soon so stay tuned and again I'll add this video and the last video to the playlist so if you want to see all of the videos it's all there there's no no secrets or anything they're the, from the cabinet with the I think the only thing that the cabinet had was the um, as I had started it years ago before I started YouTube and then I I just I had no time I was starting my business so uh, I took a stock cabinet ripped the center wall out and then um, the divider wall and put a plate in and mounted the socket and the chimney so I had just that so a video of just the socket and chimney installed to mounting part by part by part and you can see it all okay and uh, Still waiting for Jim to give me the description. He said he wanted to put some on, so waiting on that. And if you guys have any questions, I would direct them to, you know, you can direct them to me or you actually ask Jim. And he'll, he's, he has a lot more time. He's retired, so I, I only have so much time. I have all the hard box stuff, the amp repair stuff, and I know people are asking about the Henry Keltra. This is first, I'm sorry. I can't have too many things going on. I want to get this done. And I really want to get the 8023 going. I have an exciter for that now. So I want to get that going. And I need to get a, um, I'm going to buy a military generator and then uh, fire up the uh, 8021 and use that. And I just got too many things. So I, I, I can't do too many things at once. I, I just, I'm, I'm 42 now. And I just, back in the day, I'd run myself ragged, but I just too much going on. So. Just be patient. I promise I will get to the other projects. But I think a lot of people are sitting on the edge of their seat waiting to see if this will actually work. I already know the input and the output networks work fine. It's just the um, protection circuit. I reconfigured it. And uh, 
If there are any hiccups with that, I'll have to deal with that, but I'm going to get everything done, and then I'll deal with that. And then I'll fine-tune it. I might put meter lamps in the in the, in the um, meters. I might do that. I'm not sure. Just when I get it as much as I can done, then take a break, and then do the little things to perfect it. Okay, so... Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I, I mean a great night, and I will talk to you guys soon. 73. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check out the playlist. My websites are amprepairguy.com and also harbachelectronics.com. 73.